scared scared me so much when I saw the internet was out. But we are here and it's all working. So I think think we're good to go then. Yeah. So as you're happy to go. All right. So sure. All right. Oh, I'm so glad this is finally here and happening. Um. So yeah, I had a chat with you uh, about a week ago about this. Um. And obviously, th- there's a lot of stuff. Oh, sorry. I I just exited the window. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll put you back in, in the right spot. All right, so now right. that I've got you here and we've got a live audience um, and we're now recording, do you want to just start off by giving a basic introduction on who you are and what you're about? Uh, I don't know where to start, man. <laughs> it's like, um, <laughs> okay. My, um, yeah, I think many of you don't know me yet. So my name is Jordan. I live in Malaysia. So I'm a fitness guy. I'm not, I'm not a 2DX guy. Maybe 15 years back, yes, I was a rhythm gamer and I played c- quite a lot of 2DX back then. So I stopped for some reasons, lives, lives happen, commitment um, and work and stuff. And thanks to this pandemic, lockdown, get to get <laughs> this controller back. <laughs> and yeah, also Infinitas, yeah, they finally do it online. And um, the thing is, I actually never really get much chance to to try 2DX in the arcade. So there's a lot of things to talk about today. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, where did you want to start it off? As I said, it's not so much an interview as a, you know, free form discussion. So um, did you want to have a talk about sort of starting off with music games and how you found them? Because as you said, like you haven't had much chance to play in the arcades. How did you discover music games? The first, the first time I discovered music game is uh, when I was in 11 years old in one of the arcade that's about one hour away from my from my from my place, and the place, the arcade, the location itself is a very famous place. It's called Genting Highland. Genting Highland is one of the most famous uh, place, one of the most iconic place in Malaysia. So Malaysia is a tropical country. It's like year round, thirty five degrees Celsius easily up to thirty eight degrees Celsius. It's a hot country, but Genting Highland. It's a place where year round is like 18 degrees Celsius to 24 degrees Celsius because oh. it's located very high up. Oh, um, so nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Genting Highland is also a, a casino. Yeah, the one and only casino, uh, legal casino in Malaysia. So they have this, my family is like, you know, uh, especially school school holidays, we will, you, my family will bring, bring us up and uh, to Genting Highland. And then we have arcades uh, and stuff. And I came across this game. It's like a juke rock, and everybody is like surrounding it and loud music. And I'm, yeah, just curious, what is it? I was that time I was eleven years old only, eleven years old. And wow, it seems like you know back then, you know, it, like how many years ago? Nineteen ninety eight. Nineteen ninety eight. Back then, with this kind of BGA music turntable, button, and the lights. Yeah, remember the first Beat Mania? Yeah, already have lights. Those kind of like, those red color, blue color, disco lights. Yeah. Back then, it's like a huge, something huge thing. It's like today's dance rush kind of thing. Everybody yeah. was like, what is this? So it's like, okay. It's like, to me, it's like another fancy, fancy stuff. And I see people playing, people playing until uh, one of the music, if I'm not mistaken, is like 20 November. Wow, 20 November. I love the song so much. And then also another song called what? Overdoser, Romo Mix. Yeah, the third, third. Yeah, Canon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, coincidence. One, yeah. Coincidence. Canon Ballers. Uh, they actually have this recently launched this new music pack. Also have this version. <laughs> and I fell in love with this. I'm like, wow, the music sounds so so good. But I don't, I, I, of course, 11 year old kid and so many people are right, especially adults, teenagers. I don't have the guts to, to try. I really don't have the guts to play. It's like, this is like so fancy and you have to queue up and each game is like $1. I think it's one, $1 Malaysian ringgit. So it's about a 50, about 20 cents and um, 20 cents for Australian. Mm. Okay, yeah. 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 Back then it's very expensive, especially, you know, don't have money yet. Yeah, yeah. And didn't didn't get a chance to play. Yeah. But just enjoy, you know, just standing behind with my finger in my pocket, just 
you know, imagine that I'm playing <laughs> like this. I yeah. think it happens. Oh yeah. yeah, I think some of you also do that before. <laughs> yeah, so that's how it started. Yeah. So what did you actually go home then and like research the game and go? So what is it? And the the thing is, um, Genting Highland is a place that we can't go every week. We we'll go there. We we we'll go to Genting Highland is like two times a year. So during our visit, we stay there for a week. It's like every day I will go to the arcade and just watch people play and just imagine myself playing, right? Like this, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, didn't get the chance to play. And once I go back home, it's like every day the music is in my head. And back those days, it's so hard to get internet. And it's like 56K for them, you know, those <laughs> yeah. up, up connection thing. Mm. Yeah, so it's a pain, you know? And because uh, English is not my main language, I, I'm not a very tech heavy guy back then. So uh, it's very hard for me to go Yahoo, Yahoo and search for Beatmania. It's like, even though if you search for Beatmania, it takes like half an hour to load <laughs> and nothing much yeah. up. Yeah, so, so it's like, I want to play badly, but it's just that I don't have the chance to play. So the desire is, is quite strong, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So we'll fast forward, when did you actually get an opportunity to play so your first rhythm game, either at home or at Getting Highland, what was your first opportunity? Think the first opportunity is a year later, mm. 1999. And because, you know, it's like every day, um, almost every day, right? I, I've been thinking of the game. No, no kidding. Almost every day, I'm thinking of Beat Mania. For information, uh, that time was Beat Mania second mix. I think the, it is the most successful launch of Beat Mania. Oh, wow. The one with Overdoser, uh, Life life beginning of life do you love me uh, and so on and so on that series and so i feel after a year later i kind of like you know grown up a little bit <laughs> and to tell myself man i gotta man up man i really have to try it once i don't care whether i fail as long as i play it i have to do it so uh, next trip to Genting highland i finally put my token and press start play and fail. <laughs> so that's the first time. And of course, the crowd getting less and lesser because it's like the hype is going down. For Malaysia, the hype is not so much. It's a little bit different in Malaysia, right? Mm. Especially for arcade games, it, it won't last long. So yeah. this is the reason why arcade, won't, arcade games uh, can't go far in Malaysia. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's my first experience. That time was Beat Mania fourth mix already. Fourth mix, they import the fourth mix version. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. fourth mix. Where, where the songs, Ganon Scream, Logical Dash, Deep in You, Drunk Monkey. Uh, yeah. So many yes. classics, Chase. Just the, the yeah, classic. songs. Yes. <laughs> so let's like fast forward then. So obviously that was the first time you played. Um, did they get 2DX at the same arcade? Was this the same place where they got 2DX? No. Um, Year, year two thousand, the they actually they actually removed the Beat Mania machine. Oh, no more Beat Mania. And after that, I came across another arcade which is about only thirty minutes away from my house. They actually have similar game to Beat Mania, and that is the competitor of Beat Mania, the Korean company, easy to DJ. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I play. You know, you know, it's it's like this scratching game and with button. Yeah. So I started Easy to DJ year 2001. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's what sort yeah. of got you, that's where you could actively start playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The desire is so strong inside and I still kind of prefer beat Mania songs because that's where you get, that's where you started. I truly believe in that's my roots. And especially listening to the first, first tune of Overdoser, 20 November and stuff. It's like, it's like a young kid getting his first organism the first time <laughs> you never forget so i start so i started downloading bms uh the time internet got better we have a we have AD, adsl yeah. we have yeah adsl is still slow but back then it's very fast i start downloading bms and start getting better in uh search engine um seo um and stuff start searching bms and i downloaded this software this app called mix waiver <laughs> mixed waiver you know you know you know what's oh, mixed waiver? yeah you're taking me back man you know, i i played mixed waiver yeah that was one of wow. the first sims that i played on as well 
yeah um, you know so same like, thing oh like, mind blo- yeah, yeah it's like oh my god i can play at home i can just press the buttons yes <laughs> yes yes <laughs> funnily enough uh, yeah. this is a story i haven't told yeah. many people but the the first bms file i found and played on mixwaver was absolute 7k or absolute hyper now so you know in 2dx yeah? yes yes So, obviously, I started with DDR, and I was like, oh, Absolute's pretty easy in DDR, so it must be pretty easy in 2DX, right? So, I load up the BMS for Absolute, I play it, and then I go, oh my god, (laughs) this is actually impossible. Because you know how it's got the 16ths the whole way through, you know, those 16ths runs? That that killed me. I I was like, how can something be this hard? And obviously, from there, I was like, okay, no, there's got to be stuff that I can actually start with. Because, yeah, by this stage, obviously, it's like, you know, sixth... What, what was absolute? Um, fifth style, I think it was? Fourth style. Fourth style, yeah. So, around this time, like, was AC, yeah. like, eighth style, ninth style. So, for yeah. most players, that's not too bad. But for someone new who'd never seen the game, that was, like, mind-blowing. Absolute is, is level seven. You yeah. don't mistake it. Le- yeah, it's a level seven song. Back then, level eight is the level 12. Yeah, Back yeah. then, level yeah. eight is the level two. <laughs> yes. So absolutely, it's level seven. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I yeah. didn't know that at the time. So that that blew my mind. Absolutely. Um, so Crazy, is, that, is that how you discovered 7K as well? Through BMS? Um, five key, still five key. Uh, mm. My first song is a song from Easy DJ because I start download, I'm downloading BMS because I uh, came across this, BMS, uh, this mix waiver. It's like, Oh man, I can play at home is something awesome. So I start searching for songs. The songs that I can can remember is Easy DJ songs because this is the mm. very recent game that I played. I still remember songs like those, yeah, Future and stuff. stuff. Beat Mania, I completely forget it uh, because mm. um, 11 years old, I don't think I can remember the song title. And back then, the Beat Mania is like, there is no song title. The song title is secondary. The, the type of the music is primary. Example, when you select mm. song, it's about techno, house, drum and bass. It's not the song title. You select based on the genre of the music. Oh. So I didn't really, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you select, once you press start, and then only the song title will come out. Oh, wow. Like Overdoser, 20 November, just for just for like five seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. I, so, 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 so I didn't manage to download um, Beat Mania songs because I, I want to play Beat Mania, but I don't know what is the songs called i don't know what's the title so most of the bms is five keys easy to de- easy to de- dj songs and and slowly of course technology gets better if internet um with the community as well i only get to realize that hey that oh this song is 20 november that song is live in beginning of life mm. lives goes on and so on and so on yeah that's how i slowly download other bms and discovered 7k yeah all right fantastic yeah. so the next thing i was going to ask you about like following along with the story is when it came to seven key, was this around the time you discovered like Bimani style? Um, B the, the website. Yeah. I discovered Bimani style is because I start playing, um, beat mania 2 DX six style in PS2 play, PlayStation 2. Oh, so, okay, yeah. uh, how, how I came across Bimani style is because, um, my controller issue, my first controller, the Konami official JKOC, mm. are having problem with the keys, keep sticking. <laughs> yeah. So I go online yeah. and search for solution and uh, came up with B-Money style, right? Mm. B-Money style is the, is the results. So I, I went inside, it's like, wow, so many things inside. There's forums, there's trade accomplishment threads, there is um, tips, there is uh, discussions. So I, that's how I discovered B-Money style, yeah. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So were you very active back then, like on the forums and things like that? Um, no, I'm, I'm actually a very back-end person. I'm an introvert, I would say. Mm. Yeah. Although, despite all the photos that I go shirtless, <laughs> playing 2DX, playing Deep Mania or playing Easy DJ na- Naked. But my personality, I would say I'm, I'm more to like the behind the scene guy. Like, I, mm. I, I, I would prefer to do my own thing. <laughs> so uh, back then, I would, I'm, I'm just reading, but I didn't, I only post my scores, like because they have this forum threads, uh, posting oh, yeah. high scores. The accomplishment yeah, I only post thread. Accomplishment threads, yes. Yeah. That was oh, literally like, was it a thousand pages long? Or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, so back then, all the old players, uh, it's like Ryan is the top top players, mm, and yeah. Ryan and a couple of guys. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I just I remember going to that thread occasionally and just scrolling through, but I, I you know, it's so hard to keep up because it was so long. Like yes. going to the last page and just hoping that you know there's not three yes, pages you to catch up. Yeah, you you, you just <laughs> click the skip to the last page. Yeah, <laughs> you won't want to see the in the middle. Uh, it's too many things. Yeah. All right, so I think we'll skip forward now to um, the picture that I ended up posting last week, which is you standing on a stage with a check for, I think it was like 50,000 Malaysian ringgit. Um, yes. So let's let's quickly talk O2 Jam. Um, so did you discover that through BMS and through 2DX? Or how, how did that come about? How did you start playing O2 Jam? So when I, when I, when I play um bms at the same time i was playing easy to dj in the arcade um mm -hmm. something that i didn't tell um everybody and that is we actually have our own community in malaysia own easy to dj community and that's how we know friends people all around um in the place that we live um who plays easy to dj we actually form a pretty strong community we have about 50 members oh wow yeah, we even stick stickers to every Easy DJ machine, our website. We actually have our website after that. Um, join this community, you know. It's like it's like the Malaysian version of B-Money style. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. slowly getting more and more members. And um, Malaysia, the year 2003, Malaysia, because they are bringing in this new game called O2 Jam. Hmm. So they are looking for players. They are looking for rhythm gamers. And that's how they approach us. And yeah. we attend the, the pre-launch event and oh, wow. that's how we, everything started. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So did you sort of start focusing more on O2 Jam than, than 2DX and BMS yes. after that? Yeah, hundred percent. It's because Beat Mania is like the only the only place I can play Beat Mania is PS2, PlayStation 2. Mm. And Arcade, hopeless. And Easy DJ is also Arcade. And I kind of think like O2 Jam is it's online. It's like the first online rhythm game, and you can play with your friends. You can even challenge your pe challenge. You can just flex flex your skill <laughs> all around the world. But it's yeah. kind of give me like, wow, this is something. This is like my future. This is my future. I've been training so hard. I've been playing six hours every day for three to four years. I want to get this. I want to be. I want to dominate this game. Yeah. So I put all my attention to O2 Gem. I even stopped Easy DJ because of the timing, because it's different timing. Mm. Because when I play Easy DJ, I have different timing, you know, of different window timing and also beat mania. So I have sacrificed the, the rest and just focus uh, in O2 Jam. Yeah. yeah. So, and then obviously you, you got pretty good. Um, was it really competitive in Malaysia? Oh, uh, back then I was, I, I, I I, I would say I am lucky because I started from BMS. So when people are still learning how to press notes by notes, I'm already doing all the hardest song full combo with only like less than 100 uh, so-called normal grades back then already. <laughs> so I'm wow. a, I am have a very, very strong advantage. Uh, not just me, our community, because remember that I mentioned the community? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all of us been playing all this while we have a very good solid base. So when O2 Gem comes up, we dominate this game. <laughs> wow, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. obviously then, yeah. I, and I'm guessing the company was very happy to see, you know, a strong player base in Malaysia. Um, what year was that tournament? The, the picture you were taking, the, what was it? The W, I'm trying to remember the acronym. WCG. WCG. It's what, a World, World Cyber Games. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, what year was that? 2004. Oh wow! Yeah, two thousand four. Yeah, and and obviously you competed. So did your whole community attend that event? And yeah, so so basically the competition is like, it's like friendly fire. You know, it's like community. We challenge our own players. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. Yeah, so, but it yeah, must have been such an like, unreal yeah. experience for you because you know back in the day for when I was playing Rhythm Games two thousand four, we didn't have like supported competitions. We'd have like you know small local things, but. What was it like being in like, you know, a big proper official event back then? Man, it's, it's like, it's like a different thing. It's like O2 Jam, Beat Mania, Easy DJ, Rhythm Game is no longer just a game. It's more to like 
a career thing, you know, you must be, you, you can't fucked up <laughs> and you have to do your best because, uh, you know, there's price cash, there's sponsor. So you want to do your best and you can't, you don't want to mess things up. Mm. So it's kind of like changed me a little bit and, and changed my view on how I view at Rhythm Game. So, yeah, it's more like a career thing because it's like during myself, the time 2004, my age, I, I was, I was 17 years old. Also, the year last year in my high school, and then I have to decide whether I want to go work or go high, go university. So, yeah, I've been through quite a lot in, inside. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of yeah. course. So, yeah, obviously, you were, yeah. you were very competitive at this point then, right? Yeah, very competitive. Uh, so, did that keep going even after the, 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 the main event, like the big... Oh, geez, sorry, I'm mental blanking because I'm, I'm listening to the dog at the same time. So even after the big competitions, it was still quite competitive, right? Were you still playing? Uh, yes. It, yeah, it's getting more and more com- competitive, uh, right? Especially after WCG because many, many other players, new players in Malaysia um, the, um, who started later, like 2005, they kind of know that, oh, this game got competition and that's how far you can get. 15,000... Malaysian ringgit. That's that's a lot actually for for rhythm yeah. game. Yeah, oh, it's huge. In yeah, fifteen thousand. Yeah, that's huge. So a lot of Malaysian uh, start picking up this game. Not only Malaysia, um, Thailand and Singapore also start picking up this game. And then it on from there onwards, it became super competitive, very competitive. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So and um. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I was actually going to ask if there's a lot of overlap yeah. with the communities. So, I mean, obviously you're a Malaysian-based player. So you were talking to players from, as you said, Thailand and was it Singapore as well? Did you like interact with the Singaporean players? Yes. Uh, O2Gem, yes. O2Gem, mm. yes. Because it's, it's online. So I get to, especially Korea, I get, I get to know a lot of Korea top player and Japanese as well. Japanese, not so many, not mm. so many players because Japanese is like, you know, it's like, you know, I'm not sure whether this is right to say it here. It's like end of the day, mm. it started from Beat Mania and then yeah. Easy to DJ, Korean company, and then O2 Jam, another Korean company. So I think, I think yeah, O2 Jam is not is not big in Japan until all this while. Yeah. yeah. So Korea is strong. So I get to know a lot of Korean players. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think some of them still playing Beat Mania until today. And they are, I think they are the top rankers. Oh, no. yeah. Wait, so you knew some of the current top rankers now back when they were playing O2Gen? I think so, if I'm not mistaken. Are there like any, the, any the names top... you can drop? Come again? Any names that you can mention that, that you see now? Um, CSM. CSM is one of the crazy players back then. CSM, but yeah. he, he plays two he plays Mania 2 DXGs for a short while, I think like how many years ago? Nine years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And... Yeah, Definitely yeah. not KKM because KKM is, I think KKM is still haven't born yet. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how who is him, but yeah. And uh, maybe Macau D. Macau D, I think he's quite an old player. Oh, so he was yeah. around for O2 Jam as well. I think around that time. I'm not sure. Yeah. Man, that's that's crazy. Yeah. So crazy yeah. to think about. Yeah. So with all this competition, I remember you mentioning very, um, you know, last week when we had a quick chat. Um, yeah. I'm just guessing there's a lot of pressure right, to stay stay at the level that you were. Because you, you, yes. you won back in 2004 and now all of a sudden there's all these new players coming up. Um, yes. Yeah, so so had, I want to talk about that a little bit. And um, obviously, that that pressure on, on you as a player. Um, had, what happened around that time, sort of both mentally and sort of progressively? Uh, for me, I'm not sure about other top players now, but back then when I was at the top, I beat myself a lot when, during my training. Like um, after the competition, all right, so I'm the top player. So during my training, uh, yeah, I still train. I train about six hours every day. Yeah. BMS, O2 Jam, and Beat Mania. I actually start back Beat Mania. So whenever I perform badly, I will beat myself up. <laughs> I'll tell myself that I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough, which is something good for progression, but I didn't. But today, if I think, when I think back, is I actually didn't really enjoy the game at all. I start taking this game, looking at this game as uh, too competitive. It's mm. like, 
um, sometimes I came across a bad random. You know, bad random, you can't perform as good as good random, obviously, but yeah. I tell myself that it, it can't be that bad random, you have to perform as good as good random because during competition, you get bad random. Mm. So all this kind of thing is, um, is a mind block. <laughs> like, in fact, it makes me a, a worse player. So, so this is why I hit a plateau. And that is every time when I encounter bad random, I just tell myself I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. <laughs> and that's more pressure building up. Yeah. So what that happened? What, after, yeah. You know, what happened when you hit I, that I, point? I, like where it's too much? Uh, it's too much actually. And other things in life, like I started going to um, university. I stopped playing. Hmm. I stopped playing. I stopped playing Odu Jam and uh yeah, I tell myself that you know, I you know maybe it's time to retire because spending too much time and energy to play this is like, oh, uh, I don't think I don't see any future. <laughs> and and that time, a lot of new players coming up and they are really strong. They are about they they play like only for one year, but they are really really good. So I tell myself that oh, eventually everybody have to reach a uh, a stage that have to learn how to step down. So this is my biggest les lesson to accept reality and it's okay to lose it's okay to step down mm. yeah and that was probably yeah. it like so that's one big thing you took away at that point knowing when to actually step yeah. away and um they obviously pursue other things um yeah. i think this is a, a good time to segue then because this is what probably around 2007 2008 right this is 2005 oh 2005 wow this is still yeah, very early still <laughs> very early 2005 <laughs> I, I, because this is only for o2 gem I, yeah. I stepped down for O2 Jam then because I no longer had that resistance of being the top. Yeah. I kind of free. I'm kind of free. I, the feeling is so good. And that's where I started playing back Beat Mania 2DX. Yeah. And and I saw, so you sent me a video from years and years ago playing Empress CS, right? Yeah, that that's a... 2009. Yeah, that's, that's the last year I... I play, yeah. Oh, well, so you're obviously then focused very much on 2DX and you're getting really good by the looks of it as well. Don't you uh, I think because of I think I think because of uh, muscle memory from mm. BMS, from O2 Gem, and also and also the desire on how I wanted to start <laughs> playing, but I don't have a chance. It's so hard to to play. Mm. Um, not just Malaysia. I think um, all around the world as well. Beat Mania, you know, is a very niche game it's a very rare game <laughs> yeah so yeah so just having the opportunity to enjoy that were the other players in your area playing as well did you have many other people playing 2dx at the time uh my own community the the same easy dj community mm. because i shared a lot of beat mania 2dx songs uh, back then after icq and then we move on to msn messengers um yeah. in msn messenger i keep sending songs to my friends and they can't help it because beat mania beat mania song is still the best it's song <laughs> so good and they can't help it they also get jkoc i order i order for for them <laughs> and i thought literally i'm like forcing them to play beat video 2dx oh yeah. wow yeah. yeah that's amazing so yeah obviously you were playing a lot of 2dx um and then you said 2009 was the last year where you sort of went back and I think this is where a big transition sort of happened in your life, right? Around 2009. Yes. Um, so I, I haven't asked you this actually, but what sort of spurred you to sort of shift away from sort of gaming and what you were doing and then start focusing on what you're doing now? What, what triggered well, that change? Um, from 2006, I started Beat Media 2DX on and off, on and off. Mm. And I get pretty tired with Beat Mania also <laughs> because it's like um, deep within me, I'm still very ambitious, always want to triple A's and get uh, a good rank in internet ranking, official internet ranking. So I put a lot of time and energy. And 2009, I kind of realized that Beat Mania 2DX is taking too much of my time. And um, the time is after my university, I graduate, it's time to look for jobs. So because of Beat Mania, I, I don't want to work, uh, but I started going to the gym. I started, I started my gym a, a year before. I quit Beat Mania. So uh, I kind of have this turning point, asking myself to make a decision uh, whether or not I should stop play, play, 
I should stop beat menu or I just need to play less. I try playing less, but trust me, it won't work. The moment I start playing, it's just go, go goes by hours and hours. <laughs> so yeah, so a lot of things happen as in my, my family also pressuring me a lot. And uh, hey, uh, when are you going to get a proper job? And mm. yeah, and also the, at the same year also, I get into relationship. Yeah. Oh, so there's with a my lot of... wife, with my wife. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> today is nice. my wife. She's my wife. Yeah. Oh, so fantastic. a lot of things happen. Yeah, that's where I decided to uh, stop for good. Yeah. yeah. And obviously, yeah. So from there, because that was the first picture you said where I, I remember looking on your your Facebook where you said like, you know, this is where I started to take fitness quite seriously. Um, so did you always think of that as sort of a, a career progression from? from when you graduated or was it something that sort of just sort of came on for for fitness no i didn't actually plan to be a fitness instructor back then i didn't have this thinking i just um my another passion is training in the gym whenever i train in the gym it feels great especially with music yeah because if, mm. uh, whoever plays beat mania you love music for sure yeah. so uh playlists i can guarantee if you're a Beatmania 2DX level, I'm pretty sure you have your own 2DX playlist. And I have my, I have my play, playlist, 2DX playlist, only for gym. Like Nageki. <laughs> <laughs> Nageki is the one because it's like the peak. Ding, 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 yeah. ding, 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 It's like when I'm hit, especially running, right? It's like <laughs> pushing me. Like, yeah, those kind of keep, keep me going to gym. It's like uh, training, weightlifting, and music two together. It's like, wow. <laughs> So I just train, just train, and my I slowly transform. I get a little bit buffer and um, start dieting down. Body get a little bit ripper, uh, and I start taking personal training. I start doing personal training, taking taking clients, yeah. and that's how my life's move on to from a freedom gamer to <laughs> a full time fitness, fitness guy. Yeah. So one thing I did want to point out about the music yeah. thing. Um, and something which I've talked about a little bit on stream is obviously, uh, if people are aware, I've talked about Jordan's got this 21 day challenge, uh, out on YouTube. Um, so I, when I started talking to him a few weeks back, I actually asked him, so, you know, we've just got into a lockdown. Uh, we want something to do to sort of just stay active because my girlfriend and I play, uh, DDR and pump it up and we didn't have access to that. So I said to Jordan, what's something that we can do in this time? to sort of stay active and fit. And he said, look, give this challenge a go, this 21 day fitness challenge. Um, so we've taken that up. And one thing that I did want to mention back on the music thing is you've done so well matching the music backing with the exercise. Cause I noticed that the movements go with the beat <laughs> and I know it's by design. I could tell very much cause you're a music gamer that, you know, by design you've yeah. made it so that, you know, yes. when you're doing it, that music's psyching you up. That's that's pumping you up to, to sort of keep pushing through um, and do those exercises. Yeah. So, yeah, you can see the, the rhythm gamer influence in what you're doing today. And um, I, I think this brings me on to um, back on to that competitive mindset and the, the way that music games shaped you. Um, how did that influence, you know, your progression towards making the content you're doing now and the way that you're sort of training now. So how, how did that affect your mentality? Um, big thing. Music game is a big thing to what I've achieved today. Right. Let's talk about training first in fitness or whatever thing. Um, what I've realized, the biggest take that I learned from rhythm game is the, the level of focus that you can, you can get from this game. Because the level of focus, you know, it, especially playing beat minia is just next level. And then if you apply this energy and focus to other area in your life, you can pretty much triple A everything in life. That's what I've learned. So during my training back then in the gym, I was, I'm super laser focused. I think I inherit this from beat mania. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And and of course the competitive mindset is there, but I actually learned my learn my learn my lesson as as in, you know, it's okay to to fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So 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 but but it's still there. Whatever I do, anything, I want to give my best shot. I want to triple A the fitness in fitness. I want to triple A's in YouTube. I also want to triple A's in this stream. Make sure the mic is good. Your phone. <laughs> yeah, this applies everything to 
to to my life. Maybe maybe it's personality thing, but mm. I find that it is a good conditioning. And I I also realized one thing for rhythm game, especially beat mania. Um, I actually have this came across this uh, audio book called Mastery. The author is Robert Greens. Interestingly, that he mentioned that um, he he basically basically this this audio book or this book uh, interviews. He he's like an interviewer of all the legends: Albert Einstein, Charles Darwin, all Thomas Edison, and basically all the masters. And he Robert Greens actually said one thing. Uh, all of them have something in common, and that is they actually move their, they, they they move their fingers a lot to enhance their creativity. So this is kind of you know, <laughs> telling me that you know uh, I get a lot of ideas, uh, a lot of content creation directions from music from rhythm game. I think this conditioned my mind a lot. Yeah. Well, this is not not anything backed by science, but this is just my personal opinion. Yeah. And. Uh- yeah. It's actually funny you say that because before yeah. I actually started the call with you, I actually did a little bit of an intro, which um, you you will see in the video or the, the recording afterwards or the stream, Vaughn. But I said one of the unique things about your content and why I think it's so appealing to people is because of the way that you present it. Um, you know, when, when you think of exercise and you think of instructors, you think one person just staring at the screen, talking through, maybe doing an exercise. Yeah. Um I really like how you've got multiple different examples. You've sort of, you know, you know when you think of 2DX and you've got the game screen and you've got the score graph and you've got the judge down the bottom and you've got the, the, the duration length on the side, you know. I see all of that influence in your videos and what you've done because you've got yes. the progress bars, you've got the levels, you've got the, the countdowns, you've got alternative exercises in the corner neatly similar to what's in 2DX. And you see that influence in the videos, but it also makes it so much more engaging, right? When you've got those things on the screen, because you have a good idea of where you're at and what's coming up. Yeah, you've got everything broken down really nicely. Um, I think it, it really does go to show and it makes doing the exercises so much more enjoyable as a result. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I didn't, I'm not really aware of this, but it just comes comes out uh, in is it's like more to like uh, in my subcon subconscious <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, all right so one thing i want to do now is uh flip to the other side now uh because you've started playing 2dx again recently because uh malaysia's in lockdown right yeah um so what has fitness or what have you taken from fitness now that you can sort of reapply back to music games because there's a lot of people in here who uh, want to hear about sort of what a professional fitness person can tell them to really optimize their game, right? So what, what can you now put back into 2DX? Um, <laughs> how do I answer this? <laughs> the only way, the only answer I can give and, and that is um, 2DX and rhythm game in general is a workout. It's not just a rhythm game. It is a workout. I've been, I, I thought I'm very fit for the past decades of doing a lot of burpees, running a lot, lifting weights. But now when I play like level 12s, man, I'm exhausted. I'm <laughs> exhausted. So that really tells that it is a very healthy, healthy, healthy game, I would say. Yeah, it's not just like uh, sitting there and doing nothing, but you actually work your body. It's not just finger, you know. You've been made to DX, yes. It's just fingers, forearms, extensors. But I find that it's a lot of internal strength as in if you want to get a P grade, it's not just like this. No, you have to focus and you some somehow you need a little bit of chi, like, you know, <laughs> chi, yeah. like a bit of chi. <laughs> and that drains a lot of calories. Yeah, so. So it actually is yeah. a viable form of exercise. It is, it is. And as yesterday I saw Wisely stream mm. and take a look at his level, his high level player and he sweat a lot also. So <laughs> no matter how good you are, it's still going to be a good workout for you. Yeah. Uh, I remember coming into your stream, I actually asked you, uh, I think this is the third comment. I said, does this game just not tire you out at all? Because you're so muscular, right? Like, no. I was like, surely it just doesn't affect you. But, but you, um, what did you say yeah. to that again? Because, yeah. 
in terms of forearms, physically not so much, but mm. um, yeah, a little bit because I when I play now today when I play I still play for for quite long. Uh, eventually, I'll get a little bit of soreness, but I re- my body recovered um, pretty fast thanks to all the fitness training. Um, this is the biggest thing I've I've noticed. Fitness really helps you to con- to recover faster, which is a plus point. But I would say I'm I'm tired. I'm tired. I don't know why. It's not mus- It's not physically, but I'm just tired. It's, it seems like I I have to eat more food after that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like something is out. Yeah. The calorie output is real. It's more to like the non-exercise activity thermogenic, right? The the, mm. the NEAT, staying active without exercising. Yeah. Yeah, and I think someone yeah. talked about that in the comments actually when they said, you know, I, what was it? Twelves are my workout, and I said, you know, that might actually be something that's legitimate. And he said, yeah, it's a, as you said there, an, an NEAT, um, yeah, activity, okay. which is you know something which even though it's not a direct exercise per se, it is something that is burning those calories. It's something that is using up resources. And um, Yeah, because when it, when it comes to losing weight, it's all about energy balance. It's about calorie in and calorie out. Yeah. No matter what diet you are, you are doing, keto diet, intermittent fasting, if calorie balance is not there, you can't lose weight. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. NEAT is the one that helps you to burn calories without, uh, burn more calories mm. without doing much. So on the topic of calories, because I I know we talked about this very briefly. All right. So if someone does want to optimize their diet for something like 2DX, yeah, what would your recommendations be? High protein because you need to recover. Mm. And especially for new players, because your body is adapting at an adaptation state for for at once or intermediate player, I think they are fine because I'm pretty sure their body already used to it. But it is always a plus point to incorporate diet because diet, your nutrition is always 70%. 70% is like 2DX is only like what? 20%, 10%. The recovery part is the most important. So nutrition is all about recovery and make and prepping you to come back stronger in your next session. So high protein and moderate amount of carbohydrates. You need carbohydrates because anything involved in movement, right? Rapid movement you use up some glycogen. Although it's low intensity, but yeah, you still need some carbohydrates. Because if it's your lack of carbohydrates, what will happen is your, your focus tend to, um, you won't get the best focus also if you're low in carbohydrates. Because our liver store glycogen, our, our body stores glycogen in two parts, the muscles and the liver. So the muscles is what in charge of the pushing, the lifting, the liver is what in charge of the focus, mind work, and so and so on the processing part. So you need some carbohydrates. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So if we had like the, the Jordan Yo certified 2DX meal, you know, the go-to <laughs> meal, what would, what would you recommend for dinner tonight if I wanted to have a really big session tomorrow and I wanted to just smash out 12s? Um, well, I, I think generally any food in typical Asian food is, is, is great. Um, yeah. Pretty moderate in carbohydrates, and but it's low in protein, right? You need to get in some protein like uh, rice with chicken, at least at least a palm size of chicken, at least you need some protein. Mm. This is, will supply you about 40 grams of protein or 30 grams of protein. Carbohydrates, some, some protein, and I think that's good enough. That's good enough. You don't want to eat too much. If not, you will <laughs> you'll gain weight. Yeah, because you want to get everything balanced there, right? You gain weight. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think it's about um, balance. You can't just expect one meal to fuel you up the next session. You need to get in like three meal in at once. It's like the day before your big your big session. Breakfast, breakfast, um, lunch, and dinner. You need to get them. Carbohydrates, protein, carbohydrates, protein, carbohydrates, protein, right? Mm. Yeah. Wow. Really yeah. good that you mentioned that. Um, I noticed yeah. as well, you talked about how important rest is. And this is the other thing I wanted to ask about in terms of sessions. Um, do you reckon there's an optimal way of training or sort of spacing your training to get the most out of it? I will, I will look at beat minute 2DX training similar to fitness training. In fitness training, if you keep going beast mode, beast mode, beast mode, you won't go far. You'll end up injured, injuries. Yeah. 
and you end up losing motivation and you perform worse and worse and worse. So same goes to 2DX. I, I, I believe that you have to uh, cycle, cycle your training. As in, it would be great if you can do some 12 session. If, you're, if you just want to, just want to learn density. So just focus on density, but do not, because Beat Mania 2DX, the name is Beat Mania. You still have to get the beat right. So don't, <laughs> yeah. don't just focus on the, the density, but you have to always focus on accuracy. Density and accuracy will take a lot of energy. So perhaps maybe two days of high level training, level three of level 11, or depending on your, 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 your challenging levels, because everybody is different. Mm. Two days of that, and then the day after is more like a recovery session. Recovery session is like going back to level 10 or going back to something that is less challenging to, to help you to recover, active recovery. Active recovery. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed uh, and, I actually yeah. did an active recovery session uh, today or yesterday actually, uh, yeah. which was perfect timing by the way, because as I told you, I just went to play DDR. But yeah, I, I like that idea of like taking a break or taking a step back, but at the same time still doing something. So as you're saying, yes, not focus on the dense tolls, maybe focus on like easier charge notes that day or, or timing your, your eights or like your light streams, right? So you're still act actively doing something, but you're not pushing your body like to its yes. absolute maximum. Um, and, yeah. and it brings up something which um, happened very recently that we were going to talk about, which was um, overtraining. So there is actually a, a point where you sort of hit, as you said, where you keep getting worse and worse. Where do you know where the line is, where you're overdoing it? Versus pushing to get better, right? Okay. Um, overtraining is you'll get worse and worse. Mm. Not physically. Okay, f sorry. Physically, yes. Overtraining for phys in physical term is injuries. Overuse injuries like uh, tendonitis, um, back pain, um, wrist pain, injuries. And this will put you off, off from 2DX maybe. It can be quite quite long if you have serious injuries. So this is the physical part of overtraining, getting in, getting overuse injuries. Now, what is the worst is, in my opinion, is more scarier than physical is the mind block. Is the mind block. Because the more you play sometimes at the same song, same song, I remember I'm playing Kakume. Uh, Kakume, you, you know the song, yeah. right? Kakume from Seven Star, yeah. In Chinese it's called Ge Ming, Ge Ming. So I remember playing this song um, without using random. So because I tell myself that, you know, random is easy. I can easily triple A this, but I want to train non-random with good score because it's a lot of stairs. Mm. So I'm playing this song like, like one hour nonstop, but I get even worse. Why? Because of one thing, mind block. So this overtraining actually gives me more mind block. So this problem actually leads me to other songs like V. You know, V, there's a part, staircase, when you play, when you play yeah. non-random, there's a staircase part. When it comes to the part, I have that mind block with me. <laughs> and I tend to get a, a normal grade without getting P grade, without me noticing. <laughs> yeah. Or miss, sometimes even miss, I press too fast. I'm, I'm over, overreacting it. Yeah. So I would say this is the, the, the downside of uh, pushing it too hard. And of course, nowadays you have strategy like um, horizontal reading. Yeah, but trust me, horizontal reading, when it comes to a certain song, certain pattern, when the mind block is there, you will still fucked up easily. <laughs> so that's the scariest thing for me, in my opinion, if you are pushing way too hard. Yeah. So how do you avoid so instead of Yeah. So instead of overtraining, because if you're playing the same song, keep pushing the same thing over and over again and expect different results. Uh, this is crazy. Um, we want to look at overreaching. Overreaching means it gives you the same kind of effect and that is you are, you are feeling exhausted during training. But you know that the next day or that when, after your recovery day, you come back, you can, you'll be surprised that, hey, wow, you broke your scores. I'm pretty sure you, many of you experienced that, right? Uh, you had a very bad session and you kind of start beating yourself up. How come you're getting worse and worse? How come you're getting worse and worse? This is actually the point where you're heating, your, your body's getting tired, right? So when, when you reach this point, I call this overreaching. And then after a few days break, when you play back, you kind of find like 
the, the judge is easier to get P grade. It's like expanded <laughs> judge. Uh, this is the, the effect of overreaching. You will get better when you come back. So this is the difference between what I call overreaching and overtraining. You don't want overtraining. You want overreaching. Mm. So it's about understanding your body. If like you feel like your wrist is really pain, right? Then that's a little bit sign of overtraining already. And you don't want that. You have to do something about it. Maybe you want to change your positioning. Your positioning, maybe you're standing... Especially arcade cap. I'm pretty sure arcade cap is a little bit lower. We have to bend down, especially yeah. if you're if you're tall. So this <laughs> will create a lot of flexion on the wrist, and people get wrist pain. So maybe you want to <laughs> position yeah. yourself a little bit to avoid that getting into that overtraining. Uh, yeah, you've heard so, of uh, yeah. the, the ten power stance, yeah. right? That that people adopt. So in order to sort of get at a comfortable height, uh, a lot of yeah. the Western players have adopted this stance to lower their body. Oh. So, okay. and you see yeah. some people, for example, uh, Phoenix, who, you know, I talked to last week, uh, when he yeah. stands at a cabinet, he has to have one leg, like, right up against the machine and one leg, like, all the way back oh, <laughs> in order to be at the right height of the machine. So, yeah, Man. people started power stancing in order to, yeah, make sure that they don't get any sort of wrist problems or things like that. Yes, 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 yes. On the, 100%. On the topic of injuries, actually, I did want to bring up... Um, so you saw what happened with KKM recently, didn't you? Uh, how he's recently come back. Yeah, yeah, I saw the video that... This, correct? Yeah, so so yeah. a lot of people chalked it down to... I think it was muscular dystonia, right? Um, so, so what happened there? Like, Because obviously you're, you're very knowledgeable about muscles. And, and how, what happens to them over time. What happened to his muscles in that circumstance? Well, I'm no one to give any feedback because at the end of the day, only his physiotherapy, his physician know what's going on, mm. right? And I, I don't know how to read Corinne. Uh, rest, maybe he posted a blog, his article, I don't know. But um, I can say in general, is maybe it's his nutrition. If your lack of, especially electrolytes, something like some sort of muscle cramp, similar to muscle cramp, but it's more than that. And that is right after muscle cramp, if you still keep pushing it, you will, you will damage something. Mm. So especially this, this movement is more to the pecuralis, the chest shortening. And for your information, if you play 2DX, you actually train a lot of chest. Yes, everyone. You will train a lot of chest. Um, not, you won't get big, but you are using a lot of... Uh, your pec curaris muscles, pec minor, your pec major, is because of adduction, right? You always want to keep your pushing force to get a P grades. So I think I think his um, chest muscle is over dominant and having problem to relax. So therefore, it interferes his 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 movement. And I think what's worse is is the distraction also because um, at his level he need to put in like 500% focus. It's not just 100% focus. Yeah. <laughs> Dance chart, um, uh, crazy accuracy, and maybe other pressure as well because he's the top player also. Mm. Yeah, other psychology aspects. So yeah, all this adds up. So I think this is something huge that uh, I think he retired, correct? Back yeah. Because of this. Yeah, yeah, he had to take time off. Yeah. Um, funnily enough, he started playing pop and music because it didn't matter as much with pop and music. But <laughs> is it? Yeah, I thought it's worse because pop and music is, is bigger movement. Yeah. Because it's the bigger movement, because his arms out out there, it didn't matter as much. So he played pop music uh -huh. for it, but then I think people told him, "No, you, you just have to stop completely and just let it heal." Because otherwise, okay. yeah, yeah. But I think this happen. is just a short term thing. It's not. No. I don't know. Like I say, I don't know. But from what. Um, I can see because he start playing back is definitely an acute. It's not a chronic thing, mm. just a just a just a short term thing. Yeah, the muscle thing. Yeah. So for people who are really pushing at the moment, like what would you recommend then to sort of avoid things like that happening or you know severe issues from happening related to two years? Uh, injuries we can't really hundred percent avoid injuries. Yeah, even in mm. fitness, even. Like until today, and train sometimes 
I will get a little bit of injuries, injuries on shoulder injuries, a little bit of lower back pain. Injuries is part of the process. Remember that it's part of the process. Yeah, yeah. I, although I said that overtraining is bad, but it is part of the process. Mm-hmm. It's part of the process for you to realize that, oh, you're actually that good. Because when you're injured, you can't play. Only you will start reflecting back, being grateful, appreciate that when you still can play. And yeah, all, all this basically, I believe it will help you to be, uh, build you to be a smarter player. And that is maybe your nutrition, right? Get in more protein, more nutrition, drink, keep yourself nicely hydrated. Mm. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we can't, we can't avoid, can't 100% avoid that. Yeah. Things happen, shits happen in life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. So long as you're not injuring yourself. Cause yeah, I think a lot of, lot of the fear yeah. to do with um, playing 2DX is just, you know, oh, I'm going to end up with wrist pains or things like that. And um, yeah, like I've, I've spoken at length at obviously how to position your hands to not get an injury because yeah, I've, I've watched some people play, you know, resting their hands like that on the cabinet and hitting the keys. I just go, oh, that's that's going to cause problems long term. Yeah, So yes. It, and, and I'm guessing this is like a parallel with fitness. It comes down to form, right? Like if you've got yes, a bad yes, form yes. or you're doing something. 100%. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and I also changed my playing style. Back then, my playing style is like this. Three using my knuckle, uh, mm. my left, my left uh, knuckle of the middle finger to take the, the first key. And this one takes a four key, the symmetry, I think symmetry, yeah. right? Yeah. So I kind of find that a lot of flexion going on, a lot of, sorry, a lot of extension going on, a lot of extension. So this is why I try to switch to, switch to the, this style, the yeah. Toshi 10, 1048, 1048 yeah, Toshi, yeah. so I can, and, and I can, position myself a little bit sideways. Mm. So my arms get lengthened even more instead of like this, my arms get to lengthen even more. So I feel a little bit more comfortable playing this, but I'm not promoting playing this play style. It's just that <laughs> I find that um, it is, uh, maybe it's me because I, you know, I don't think I can look at here. My 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 ulna bone, this is the ulna, ulna joint, is very prominent. Normally, is normally for your ulna bone is normally located sideways. My one is in the middle, mm. in the middle. Yeah. So a lot of extension, I tend to get a lot of wrist problem. So that's just me. It's all about understanding your own play style. Yeah, yeah. And I think people will adapt to that yeah. sort of accordingly. Um, but it, yeah. it has shifted that way. Like when you watch all the top rankers uh, at the cabinets, you notice as you're saying they're sort of sideways now. There's very few players that are sort of dead on straight to the cabinet. Uh, depending on their, the side they're playing, they'll actually, yeah, angle themselves off to the side a little bit to straighten out the wrist or to straighten out, um, yeah, so it doesn't... So I think I think you can also apply more strength that way or you probably last a bit longer as well because you're not straining yeah. your wrist at, like, strained angles. Um, so there you go, guys, 1048 style. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, like I said, as long as you're comfortable. But if you if you really want to stick to a play style but giving you problem, maybe you can try a wrist, a wrist support, a wrist strap, a wrist strap, or do a little bit of a mobility before. Oh, hang on. I think. Oh, we've just had a cut out there, unfortunately. Ah, just as we were talking. I'm uh, just checking. Is have, have we lost the stream or? Oh yeah. no! All right, there we go. Yeah, my connection was. A there little you bit... go. <laughs> Sorry. 4G. Yeah. <laughs> Good old 4G. Apologies for that one, guys. Yeah. So, so you're recommending <laughs> yeah. wrist braces and things like that if people are having yeah, issues. Yeah. No harm. Yeah. No harm trying it. And even as yeah, some some people will experience a little bit of lower back pain. Right. You can even get a lower back strap. <laughs> yeah. So take. The, Take this game like a workout, like a real workout. Yeah, not just, just not a game. It's a workout. Like I said, it's a workout. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously it, it goes back and yeah. forth, right? So any any yes. practices that help you get better, obviously, right? like training wise are going to help as well with 2DX long term. Yeah, train hard, train smart. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's the smart training part, which I think um, I've actually really taken away from, from your stuff because once again, coming back to the challenge... I remember talking to you around day four, day five, just going like, Jordan, I don't know if I can do this. I'm so sore. <laughs> Actually dying. And then obviously now we come back to, you know, day, what am I on now? Day 12. And yeah, like I'm, I'm feeling fantastic because yeah, because of the way that you've set it out. And, and it comes back to training smart and, and actively thinking about 
what you're doing in each session. Yes, and also the it's okay to feel uncomfortable. We, um, any progression in life, any changes, any progression, is uncomfortable. Mm. There is nothing in life that is comfortable but gives you good results. They say no pain, no gain. Yes, it's a very meat hate quote, but <laughs> it it is it is true. It had it is true at some point of life. Uh, like 2DX, you have to get yourself uncomfortable as in your eyes will get tired really fast um, and your arms is like, you can't really move your forearms and a little bit of pain here and there, but just be smart, right? So smart as in your nutrition, you do need to support you, your rest, maybe your restrap or your playing style. Yeah. So whatever you can do to sort of obviously mitigate that or, or to keep pushing through, of course. Yeah. Oh, oh man, really good advice. Really, really solid advice. Yep. Uh, one thing I did want to touch on now, because I, I think we've, I'm going through the list, because I'm just scrolling through uh, some of the topics we had here. Um, I did want to now go across to sort of other music games, because we talked a little bit at length about uh, dancing games as well. Um, so when do you normally run? Like, do you go out for runs or jogs and things like that? Yes, I run about four times a week. So in, in the AM, in the AM is my weightlifting session. Mm. Right? This is where I train my muscles. And then during the PM evening, I'll go for evening run of 5 p.m. or 10 p.m. run four times a week. Yeah. yeah. So when we're comparing that to say, for example, DDR or, or Pump It Up, um, how effective is that as a cardio exercise compared to say, for example, your five to 10K run? Um, to me, I would say it's more effective than running, to be honest. More. It's more effective than running because you see running, if I run 10 kilometer nonstop, it is, it will be one hour or sometimes when I go faster, it will be 15 minutes. That's quite fast. I mean, mm. for 10 km run, that's 15 minutes. That's it. And after that, I'll just, okay, 10 km. I'll just guess out. Okay. Call it a day. But when it comes to DDR, I can play like two hours and that's, it's like level level 15, level 16 with no bar. It's like different training. Running is steady pace. I still do running because it's like a therapy. It's like meditation. I still do running because co constant steady pace, especially with music, uh, playlists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but when DDR, it's like more to like an interval training. Your, your heart rate will get spiked up really high and then you get a short recovery and then you just go like this. And for easily one hour, I would say, because of music and because there is a purpose in every single second, you have to step the panel, you have to do crossovers, you have to listen to the music, you have to <laughs> fight for a scores. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. in my opinion, it is more effective when it comes to calorie burning, for sure, 100%. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. For DDR, yeah, for DDR, but not beat mania. Beat mania <laughs> and running. I think running still burns more calorie than beat mania. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, even unless you play intense, yeah. four hours, yeah. four yeah. hours of intense twelves, you know, like the yeah, me, yeah, then yes, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, uh, yeah, because that's one thing I've always wondered. I'm like, am I actually should I just be running or should I like keep going and playing regularly? Um, so, so do you reckon that an interval training approach like DDR is going to do you better in the long run compared to just yes, consistent? Yeah. Um, depending depending on your goal depending on mm. your goal. If your goal is to get better at DDR, then you should do some interval training outside DDR, like a body weight training or interval run, like 800, like 400 meter run, and then two minutes rest, and then repeat this for 10 rounds or five rounds. Yeah, this will help you to condition your body to not just get fitter, but the ability to recover faster. Mm. Because DDR is about recovery. After one song, after that, um, is if you recover fast, you can easily go to the next song, like Kaiden, like the Kaiden course in DDR A. Yep. So if you have that fitness level, definitely it will help, it will support you. Yeah. I'm actually curious what yeah. you think about uh, DDR and fitness, though, because uh, interesting fact: the the top player in Australia at the moment, uh, he weighs over 100 kilograms. <laughs> which is crazy to think about right like you know one of the yeah one of the most physically demanding games he's yeah he's, he's like a tank uh his name's blastoise like 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 the pokemon 
<laughs> um, last night. <laughs> but but interesting fact, he actually had to take some time off to do what you were saying. Like he started doing some interval training or going for runs and things like that to shed a bit of weight, so that when he came back, um, he could perform better. So it, it's interesting that you mentioned that, right? You know, if you want to get better, you've got to do some interval training or something on the side to to help. And um, pulling this all the way back to 2DX now, and I know we've jumped around a little bit, um, I, I linked to that video to... Oh, I've forgotten his real name, but Arkel, uh, the guy who was talking about muscle training for the hands, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, what do you think about sort of external training for 2DX? Like, is there anything you can do to strengthen or improve um, to, to sort of increase stamina for 2DX outside of 2DX? Well, I think for beginners, no harm trying it out, right? Like basic uh, wrist extension <coughs> yeah, to strengthen the extension because uh, big mania is a lot of this movement, right? You can see a lot of this, right? So anything involved in simple as get, taking a light, light dumbbell, yes, must be light because this is not a strong, heavy muscle. So you can just do this for, do this for reps. Uh, it helped, but... For intermediate players or advanced player, I don't think it is necessary to do because they are already adapted to it. And I truly believe in being specific. So if you want to get fit in Beat Mania 2DX, your main training, your main physical training should be 2DX based, should be playing more songs. That's how you improve in a faster way. But on top of that, if you want to incorporate some fitness training, no harm trying it. At the end of the day, you, I, I don't find it is 100% necessary. For beginners, no harm doing it. But for advanced, it's like, I don't find the needs to, for them to do it because they are already spending a lot of time playing Beat Mania. Yeah. They can easily play four hours or three hours of <laughs> level <laughs> two-offs. So that's already a workout for them and they don't need extra conditioning. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah. On that topic, I, I've been meaning to ask you, uh, now that you've started playing 2DX again, because I remember you had like a crazy four-hour session the other day, um, yeah. has it been sort of balancing exercise, because you do your daily exercise, has it been balancing that and your 2DX sessions while you're in ISO? I think I, I, think I push a little bit too far. <laughs> and that is, especially not playing Big Mania for, for 11 years. I mean, mm. and start back, you know, I have to get the muscle memory working. And this is my third week playing, third, yeah, third week playing. And that day I actually played four hours of level two of back to back nonstop. And then when I do my workout, it actually hurt me bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The workout is like, yeah, it's like, it's like Kaiden's workout <laughs> for my weight training workout. So I think I push a little bit too far. So at the end of the day, it's about balance. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Is there a yeah. specific cutoff you'd recommend for most people where, you know, you probably want to, you know, take it easier or sort of ease back? Because I find at the moment, you know, once I hit the two hour mark, I'm just, I'm gone. Like <laughs> I have to stop. Otherwise I just, yeah, like everything past that point is just not beneficial, I think. Okay. So, well, it depends on how you feel. So if you are feeling you can't pass the point two hours after playing two hours, you can't pass the point. Um, if you pass that point, it is actually overreaching. That's where the real training begin. In my opinion, that's how I trained myself back then. After two hours, when I want to pass out, I can't focus. That's the real training begin. That's the, that's mm. the first minute of training. That's how we get that overreaching results. But okay. anything more will, will lead to over injury. So you don't want that overuse injuries. So, um, for you, depending on your goal, if you just want to play for fun, I think it's overkill. Two hours is already overkill for <laughs> playing for fun. But if you want to be a top ranker, I think you should play about two hours and then keep conditioning yourself. It's like, you see all the top players, top rankers, I, I don't understand how they can play like four hours nonstop streaming, streaming on Twitch, YouTube, going level 12, and then the score is like maintained. For me, it's like the first hour, good score. Yeah. The second hour, well, it's like good decline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But for them, it's like they can maintain. I think it's, this is the over the, the muscle adaptation that they already achieved. Yeah. Yep. So it depends depends on, on, on your goal. Yeah. 
So I guess if, yeah. if you do want to have that ability, like that stamina to keep going, then you, you've got to push it, right? Yeah, you got to push it. And of course, you want to push it, make sure your nutrition is on par with your training. If not, you is you can easily destroy something like uh, your your tendons and stuff because it requires a lot of protein to rebuild mm. the tendon and stuff. So this yeah. is why we need a lot of protein. Yeah. It's interesting as well. I, I forgot to mention this point back when we were talking about diet. Um, back in the, like the Sparta top ranker, uh, they actually did like a little interview with all of the top ranker players and they asked them what their favorite food was. And 90% of them said meat, <laughs> some form of meat. It was like, you know, karage or yakiniku or, you know, some, some big form of protein. Um, and I think, I guess that, that goes to show that, you know, if you want to be good at TDX, that. Yeah, that, that protein side, that getting a lot of meat or protein into you is key, like really essential. Um, yeah, I think it's also more to uh, our body reaction. When your body is need lack of something, you will automatically crave for, <laughs> for, <laughs> for the protein. Yeah, but it's good to be aware rather than waiting for your body to crave it. So, so it's good to be aware first, getting in more protein, real food, like, like real food, not processed food. Yeah, processed food is fine, but balance it a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah, when I was playing DDR, funnily enough, I, I ate pretty poorly. <laughs> Nowadays, I'm a lot better. As I said, I've got like the, the burrito shop yeah. downstairs and that that seems to do... Burrito great. is good. Yeah, so there you go, guys. Mexican yeah, food is a good one. <laughs> burrito is good, yeah. What, what's your post-session meal? I'm actually curious because like, I, I watched your dietary video, but after a 2DX session, what are you eating? Uh, for me, <laughs> I don't have any specific diet for 2DX because it's, in my opinion, it's not too intense yet unless I I go back to my beast mode uh, training for four hours. After two hours, <laughs> when, I, when I can't go anymore, that's where the training begins. When I go that mode, I will just, I will, I will have, definitely I will have a carbs meal, carbohydrates, uh, rice, noodles, rice and noodles, yeah, rice and noodles. I feel, I feel, I feel that rice and noodles fill me up faster. Yeah. Uh, white starch, white starch, something that you want fast. Yeah, mm. process is it is processed, but uh, this where uh, this is the the golden time that you want to refuel your body after all the all the all the damage has been done to your tissues and central <laughs> nervous system. Yeah, so potato will work. Potato, white potato. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, potato works. Sweet potato will also work. Bread. Yeah, and protein, of course, protein. Yeah, I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll get my protein shake. Protein shake for. 2DX. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gotta, gotta get that Jordan Yo brand uh, 2DX. It's funny that you mentioned noodles, actually, because um, you probably noticed last night on, on Wisely's stream that his, yeah. uh, his emote is noodles. Because uh, we actually refer to, you know, the, the charge notes. Yeah. Okay. In, in 2DX, we refer to those as noodles. <laughs> oh, so if you've got because when when you've got like a whole bunch of them coming down it looks like noodles falling down the screen and, and okay. we always we always say that you know a wisely is just really really good at, at doing charger notes because he eats so many noodles in singapore noodles. <laughs> <laughs> so true there's actually start eating more noodles yeah you should start <laughs> adding more noodles to your diet it'll help with your charge notes good. um right i'll give it a shot <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like i think we've covered the basis like everything that we really wanted to to address in this uh was there any other topics or things that you can think of off the top of your head that we wanted to um at a moment <laughs> no yeah I, I, yeah the thing is the next question and that is after this lockdown in malaysia will i still play 2dx yeah uh, this is i think it would be a next challenge for me to consider because it's like after lockdown life happened life mm. goes on so I will definitely do my absolute best to keep playing this because this is the roots of my life. And every time when I play 2DX and then when I would just do, when after my 2DX session, or maybe I go for a run or day after that, it kind, it kind of like gives me more idea in content cre creation. Like I mentioned, maybe because of the, the mind and body, they are working, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and of course the focus, the level of focus, but uh, of course too many, good things is never a good thing. I remember that I always remind myself with this and that is I can't play too much of 2DX also because if not, I would just get exhausted. Yeah. 
oh, you know, whole days like in that is. Considering how active <laughs> you are already, this, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I, yeah, I, I yes, feel yes, tired yes, just playing 2DX, but thinking of, you know, your your yes. weight training and your cardio and then 2DX in one day. Yeah. Like, yeah. Got, I, yeah. I just think, no way, it's, it's so much. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I don't know how you're still standing at the end of that day. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Balance. Yeah. It's about getting it balanced. Yeah. 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 So now that we've sort of hit the end of this point, um, I will turn to the chat very quickly. There were a few questions that popped up uh, while we were chatting. One person actually wanted to know about energy drinks. Um, what's your take on energy drinks? Well, it works. Yeah, of course, because it's um, sugar and caffeine. Yes, mm -hmm. caffeine. One thing I mentioned, caffeine. Caffeine is the one that really gives you that, that not just energy, but that focus. But caffeine can also fuck you up because it's like, especially if you are aiming for combo. This is my my, my experience because mm -hmm. O2 Jam, the scoring for O2 Jam and Beat Mania is different. O2 yeah. Jam is about combo. The higher your combo, your score will multiply. So if you have a lot of caffeine with you, you'll get nervous very fast. Oops, thunderstorm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you have a lot of caffeine, too much of caffeine, you I will experience jittery. So you want to get just the sweet spot of caffeine. Mm. It will help you in mental focus and strength. So energy drinks, most energy drinks have this, uh, I'm not sure whether it works for everyone, but like, yeah, have, give it a try. I think it works because it's high in sugar as well, replenish. And I remember uh, seeing some of the top rankers doing live stream during their game, they actually have the energy drinks. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I actually, on that point, I read an article, uh, cause remember how I was doing research leading into this, um, the, the Jurian article actually, funnily enough, um, okay. it, it mentioned that you have a triple shot and pre-workout, a triple shot espresso and, and a pre-workout. Is that still true? Yeah, triple shot is nothing to be honest. <laughs> for pre workout, for, 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 for weightlifting, for fitness training. Yeah. Um, normally we have a pre workout supplement. The pre workout supplement, one, one, one serving is already three shots of espresso easily. Wow. easily. Oh, wow. And that's, that's, that's the standard serving, standard serving. Um, people, will go up to two, people will go up to two scoops of that. That means Jeez. six to seven shots of espresso. Yeah, people wow. will actually go that that high for 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 fitness training. But like I said, your body will adapt to it. So the more you take, the more you, you the more your body will get used to the caffeine also. Yeah. So that's the scary part of it. Yeah. So and gonna... and to the extra training, I would say in order to get that overreaching results, is um during your training, try not to rely on energy energy drink too much. Try to let your body to condition on its own to the stress mm. and then when it comes to maybe a competition or a big day and it when if you add your energy drink it's like wow you're in trance mode <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's kind of a uh would you say it's sort of a performance enhancer but you don't want to abuse too much yes 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 but in the natural yeah it's not those drugs but it's energy drink sugar it's, it's still nutrition end of the day yeah and even some athletes will go as extreme i'm talking about running all right mm -hmm. running some athletes will go as extreme as uh taking low carbohydrates during their training and then during competition start taking back carbohydrates cut loading and then their mm -hmm. body is like poof. it's like a dry <laughs> sponge absorbing water <laughs> yeah so yeah i guess yeah so so caffeine isn't off the cards it, it's definitely something that you want to take but obviously moderation yeah, not, yeah. moderation yes not not six energy drinks while you're playing <laughs> yeah. uh, just having a look if there's any other uh queries or questions um uh, whether it's to do with 2dx fitness anything like that um you know as i said jordan is an expert in the field so you definitely want to you know get some questions in otherwise there's always the comment section as well um of, of youtube you'll you'll definitely keep an eye out on that and and be around to answer questions i'd hope sure <laughs> but yeah yeah um no the, other than that like yeah i'm really really happy that you've, you've come on obviously and and taken the time out because i know you're a busy guy got a, got a lot of well i'm attention. happy to do this it's like you know what this is my first I do i do a lot of this kind of interview for fitness i like hundreds over of this kind of interview with publishers, media, and, and people. But this 
interview, this stream is basically the first interview that is non-related to my fitness in my life. So actually, I'm quite nervous at first. I'm quite excited. And that is, who the hell wants to listen to a fitness guy talking about 2DX? <laughs> it's two different channels. I can see by the chat, yeah. though, there is a lot of people. And I think you have brought a lot of insight, like a, a huge amount oh. of insight into you know, other ways of thinking about or approaching the game, which I think a lot of people don't yep. consider most of the time. So, yeah. No, thank you so much for taking the time out today. Um, thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, my absolute pleasure, man. Absolute pleasure. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, obviously, I've got his Instagram tag there, Jordan Yo Fitness. That's across Insta, YouTube, and Facebook, I believe. It's the same brand. Yeah, yeah. Only for those of you, if you're okay with me shirtless, because 99% <laughs> of time, I'm naked. So don't follow. Please don't follow if your if your girlfriend or your boyfriend is keeping eye on you, right? Because I have a lot of uh, friends, they unfollow me because when they are following me, right? Friends, real life friends, when they are following me, their girlfriend, right? It's like, suspect them. Hey, why are you looking at naked guys? <laughs> <laughs> Same goes to other girls' followers, their boyfriend sus suspecting them following a pawn. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in all seriousness, um, if you guys are looking to sort of get a little bit more active or get motivated to, to try out fitness stuff, um, I personally can't recommend Jordan stuff more than, than enough because as I said, it's, it's done wonders for me. You know, I'm still doing the 21 day challenge. Um, especially for music gamers, I think the style that he's presented it will resonate with you guys really well. Um, so definitely go and check out his stuff and give it a shot. Um, and yeah. as you can see, he's a friendly guy. He's, he's more than happy to, to help and, and support you yeah. wherever you can. Sure. So yeah, so thanks again for coming on. You're right. Thank you. Um, and yeah, hopefully you, you do keep playing and you do keep uh, sort of interacting with the players here. Because it's been, yeah, it's been an absolute joy for me yeah, to, yeah. to be able to, you know, talk to you regularly and obviously talk about both 2DX and the fitness stuff. So, yeah, yeah, no, all good. So, yeah, good, thanks man. so much. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you also to my stream for only cutting out one time. I thought it was going to be so much worse <laughs> <laughs> through all of this. Yeah, what a day. Yeah, so many things happen, but it's all good. It's like challenging your good, beautiful destinations Obviously, we have to go through a tough road. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. It's like that. Yeah. All right. So once again, guys, check mm -hmm. out Jordan's stuff where you can. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, uh, for this channel, because I know this is going up on YouTube, uh, we do have more interviews lined up. Um, I, I'll talk about those through the socials. But yeah, no, it's been an absolute pleasure today, man. Thank you so much. Great. All right. We'll leave it there for today. All right. Thanks, guys. And hopefully we'll catch you in the next one.